Welcome to the Empowered Spirit Show. This is your host, Terry Ann Hyman. I'll explore the connection to the human spirit in a way that helps to navigate your life, including crisis. I am passionate about helping you to open up to your intuition and the metaphysical world of spirit to find your confidence in your own inner guidance. Take a pause, be inspired, learn ways to show up focused, centered, and more dynamic in your everyday life. Welcome back to the Empowered Spirit Show. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining me today. This episode is being sponsored by Ritual and Shelter. Are you looking for a magical place to shop and hold space? Check out Ritual and Shelter online or in Homewood, Alabama. Browse through their bookshelves covering topics such as energy healing, crystal healing, Reiki, chakras, auras, the Akashic Records, shadow work, astrology, and earth-based healing. You can also find herbal teas and tinctures alongside their crystals and oils to help establish a mindful mindset and fluid ambience before meditation, ritual work, and reflection. Ritual and Shelter is dedicated to providing one-on-one in-depth conversations with customers to help them find the most efficient healing methods and resources that match their unique interest and energy. They offer tarot sessions, Reiki, sound bowl, and crystal healing, and now they are offering witch consultations. Visit RitualShelter.com to book an appointment and bring peace back to the body, mind, and spirit. You can also find them on Instagram at Ritual Shelter Shop, as well as Pinterest at Ritual Plus Shelter. As this podcast goes to air, we are in some very powerful times that is allowing each of us to raise our vibration, expand our consciousness, and open up to a deeper part of who we truly are. Scorpio season has begun. It's deep. It can have a sting to it, but it does take us into the inner resources of who we truly are. We had a very powerful new moon last week, which helped all of us open up to the depth of our souls and expand our consciousness, as I've been talking about. This season already feels very intense at times as we ride the waves of political change and wonder. Here where I am in the States, the United States, very hard to say that united part given we are coming into election week, and it's hard to know the outcome. And my prediction is that there will be lots of controversy over what comes forward. So it is a time to tune into you, what your beliefs are, what is your own voice, and who you're giving your power to. If you aren't really sure how to do that, now is the time to slow down, to hear the messages of your soul, so that you can know which direction you want to go in. And I can help you with that. I can help you process your emotions, help you process and work through old traumas, so that you can open up and really allow yourself to grow. I have mentoring programs that can guide you into setting up your practice, working with embodying the energy of mindfulness so that you understand more and more about how you show up. Avoidance is not the answer, especially during this season right now. Everything comes to the surface and we have the choice to either work with it or run from it. What is the choice you are making? And as we move into this whole idea of the thinning of the veils, the physical and non-physical, getting really close, we can expand the way in which we think, the way in which we can work with our energy and understand the potential for new revelations to come in about your path. We've been talking an awful lot about the opportunity to expand your consciousness and how you can work with your soul. This is what I teach. This is how I mentor you to create a spiritual practice, to have the tools to embody this work so that you can feel your energy. You can understand more of your innate abilities, open up to your intuition, find the confidence to stand up for what you truly believe in. There's so many ways I can help you with this. Do you want to learn more about your soul's purpose? Do you want to learn how to feel more confident in the work that you're doing, show up with your soul at work, schedule a spiritual upgrade, breakthrough call with me, and we can talk about what's getting in your way and the number one thing you can do to move forward, create a path, and live the life you choose to live. I'll put the link in the show notes. In today's episode, 
I continue with this series on expanding consciousness. We started with the work of Ralph Metzner, so great, the father of psychedelics, the explorer of consciousness. What a great interview with his wife, Kathy Coleman. Last week, we talked about Jim Morrison, a secret teacher of the occult with the work of Paul Wilde. And this work, oh my gosh, what a great interview. Amazing teacher, Barbara Hen Clow, and her work. It's the 20th anniversary Alchemy of Nine Dimensions. So much information. How honored I am to be able to speak with her. Truly amazing in this interview. In this 20th anniversary edition, she talks about activating the full spectrum of consciousness. She includes updates from her continued research, including evidence from the supercomputer Blue Brain Project. Very interesting. She maps out the nine dimensions of the human brain. And she also describes her recent discoveries of ancient tech. And she also describes how recent discoveries of ancient technology mirror the Palladian dimensional system. In this episode, we talk about how people are ready to wake up the nine dimensions, the Palladians, the Lumerians, spirituality, religions, and ways in which you can open up to these higher vibrations of energy. Before we begin, let's take a moment to pause center and set an intention for these powerful times we are in so wherever you are if you can close your eyes taking a nice deep inhale breathing up the body and as you exhale bring in the breath all the way down slowing down inhale expanding the breath up the body and as you exhale, call all your energy into you. Call it in. Inhale, expanding the breath up the body. And exhale, slowing down. Bringing all the energy in. Begin to align the spiritual body right on top of the emotional, the mental, the physical bodies. Centering. Inhale, expanding the breath up the body. And as you exhale, dropping into the heart, right into the deepest part, feeling that connection, your spirit and the greater spirit. Know that you are loved, guided, protected, feeling all this energy coming in around us as we call in our Reiki masters, the ascended masters, calling in the archangels to open the heart with joy and love, Calling in the crystal beings for amusement, magnification. Calling in your higher self right above the crown to help you receive these messages for you. Taking another deep inhale and exhale. So we take this time and notice where we are in this great wheel of life. As I teach, we find ourselves in the season of fall in the direction of the west where the sun sets each and every day. We allow ourselves to notice the cycles of life, the struggles we go through. We allow ourselves to recognize the harvesting of our work for this year with gratitude. We call in the directions to the west, the north, the east and the south, above us, below us, right into the very center right into the deepest part of your heart. Taking a moment, setting an intention, your light, your path, and allow the elevated emotions, how you want to feel to radiate out all around you, exhaling through the aura, setting that energy for you. Taking another deep inhale and exhale. Feel the heart open. Feel the illumination of your third eye. And as you're ready, blink in the eyes, back open, coming back. So my guest today, Barbara Handcloud, is an internationally acclaimed astrologer, ceremonial teacher, 
author, and Mayan calendar researcher. Her numerous books, there are so many, include The Palladian Agenda, Awaken the Planetary Mind, The Mayan Code, the Mayan Code, and her recent fictional trilogy, Revelations of the Ruby Crystal, Revelations of the Aquarian Age, and Revelations from the Source. Jerry Cloud, her husband, who is also part of this book, is a registered cranial sacral therapist and board-certified polarity practitioner. For more than three years, Jerry, along with Barbara, has taught thousands of students worldwide to navigate the nine dimensions to lead fuller, more conscious lives. The authors live in Santa Fe, New Mexico. So let us welcome Barbara Hancloud to the show. Welcome. Glad and happy to be here. I am glad and happy to have you. I really am. Your experience, the, all the books you've written, you have a world of knowledge. So I'm so grateful to bring you to my listeners. So congratulations on your 20th anniversary of Alchemy and the Nine Dimensions. How Thank exciting. You. Yes, we're very excited. Yeah, and I think as you were saying before we even hit record, just like the upgrade of energy in the book, the cover, the way you put it together, your son being a part of it, that's really fantastic, yeah. And then most importantly, Terry, um, people are ready for this book now. It's been out for 20 years, and it's, it's you're going to find whoever decides to read it. It's a complicated book, but everybody seems to be ready now. Now, what does that tell us? That tells us we're getting someplace, and that's why I'm so excited. Yeah, and I think that's a great discussion. I'm going to ask you that in a minute. But first, let's just take our listeners a little bit back to your information. I've read about you. I've known about you. But let our listeners know, like, how did you even come into this work in the first place? Well, I, first of all, have an indigenous background, a Cherokee background. And then when I was five and a half years old, um, I had a near-death experience. I fell off of a tall tower and was actually unconscious on the ground for like four or five hours until they found me. Imagine that with your five and a half year old daughter. And so at that point, my grandparents who were more, um, my parents had already started to transit into American culture. My father, who was a quarter Cherokee, was just becoming full blown American, but my grandparents lived nearby. And so at that point, my Cherokee grandfather and Celtic grandmother um, began training me in the record uh, teachings. Now, there are different um, indigenous teachings, like like medicine teachings and ceremonial teachings, but I'm primarily a record keeper. And that's why I go back through so many um, years of time. So that's how I got started. And then the only other thing to say about it is because my grandparents were so close to me, I was with them um, like three weekends out of four until I was 17. Um, I didn't lose the, the magical touch. Uh, nobody could ever shut me down. And boy, they tried, especially in grade school. Didn't work because I was I was singing another tune from age five and a half. Yeah, oh, wow. Where where did you grow up? Saginaw, Michigan. And my grandparents lived in Bay City, Michigan, which is right up the river. It was perfect. Okay. And our family cool. at that point, it's many branches of our family had been there for five or six generations. So we were really old. old people in, in Michigan, and then before that, New England. Hmm. Yeah, fascinating. Course, My mother's family carries Creek. So we come from Arkansas, Mississippi, Tennessee oh. area. Yeah. And so I know part of my own background comes from there as well. Yeah. Fascinating. And you know, to tell you the truth, almost anybody, people should realize that almost anybody who has been living in America and their family for a couple of generations, somewhere in there, there's Indian blood. And what happened is people tried to cover it up. My parents, for instance, tried to cover it up, but it just didn't work because it's there and it's part of us. And mm -hmm. so the oldest, then my New England uh, ancestors all came over practically on the Mayflower. And then uh, the Cherokee tradition goes way, way back before that. So I really feel that, um, you know, this is my, my land and my country. Yeah, I hear you on that. As many times as I've tried to get out of Alabama, like even in my DNA, you know, testing, it shows up. The McAfee's, my mother's family, were farmers, and they've been here five, six, eight generations, many, and just kept crossing that Mississippi River in search of cotton yeah. and better lands. They were farmers. So I agree yeah. with you. I really do. And I think it's important when we can understand our lineage and our history. Yeah, And there's a deep resonance when people respond to their background, the very deep resonance with the earth itself. And that's very important. I, I really agree with that. And I know I get a lot of my ability to bead 
and do jewelry work through that. Sometimes I don't even know how I make stuff and it just starts to come mm-hmm. out. I just sit down and my hands go. And now yeah. I carry that through in a lot of my healing work. Like I don't even know sometimes I'm channeling stuff and I'm just trusting, which we'll sure. get into in a minute. But let's talk about your book and let's talk about the upgrade and the re- things that are coming about now, 20 years later in the work that you're doing and all this idea of the very di- different dimensions of energy that we can work with. What have you yeah. noticed the most? Well, first of all, the fact that um, the younger generations and even our generation, are, and I think you and I are kind of in between, but um, people now get get this stuff. It's it, you know We've got a resonant field operating here now which took, in, our, in my case with Jerry, 20 years of research and, and teaching. And then there's a lot of other uh, teachers working in multidimensional consciousness. So the big shutdown that the global elite planned for all of us was to make sure that what's happening right now didn't happen. And the interesting thing about this moment in time, and I had no control about when this book, you know, when it came back and all that kind of stuff, but at this point now, the astrology started to support us. And so your, your, your group of people may have already noticed some positive things happening this fall, just little sneaky positive things. And you're going like, what? And meanwhile, the shutdown, the pressure of the shutdown is just incredible. And so we're just at this ultimate maximum tension point right now. And then and add an election to it, intense solar flares and things like that. And then somehow my life conspired to put me right here. And this book, by the way, is really taking off because people are really responding. And so I'm in a position to really be able to reach people fairly easily at this point. And I love Zoom. Zoom has made all kinds of things possible for us. So those are very positive things. And you can't suppress people, ultimately. Although they're trying very hard. I guess when you talk about the shutting down, the pushing down, sometimes they talk about like the dark forces pushing on us, the old, the very end of age of Pisces coming forward. Now, here we are trying to move into this new age. And we do have a lot of that tension. It's like, that's that's what we need, (laughs) right? Oligarchical tendencies and the tendencies by the billionaires. And so I never would have believed five or 10 years ago that something could play out the way COVID did, the way of the suppression of one's, Side of the um, issue was um, suppressed. And then the way the dominant forces in the media, and at this point, it's just shocking what the media is doing just in this election campaign alone. So we're really at that point where what every, every person believes and thinks about is really important because you can see in the model of alchemy of nine dimensions, everybody has one vote and the nine dimensional model shows how that works and it tells you how to exercise your vote. And so at this point, each one of us, we've got to realize that we, I'm as powerful as Bill Gates, okay, or whatever you want to take. Don't tell me there's anybody who has any right to say anything more than you or I can say. I love that. And that also requires that you know what your authentic truth is. Who yeah. are you listening to? And what are you in turn bringing out with your voice? Is it what you really believe or is it somebody else's thoughts? Yeah. That's right. And then I really think the mastery of accessing 9, 10, 11 dimensions is important because it's a fairly simple way to start organizing the more powerful elements of your consciousness. And so when people start to activate at the extraterrestrial level or or at the level of sound consciousness or or Reiki energy or, or energy in general, when people first start to awaken, the whole thing is like a crashing disaster on the freeway where you're freaked out. You don't know what to do. You're over-energized. You're confused. Everybody in your family is telling you you're stupid and so on and so forth. And this book is a relatively simple organization of how to use the higher powers that all of us have. Yeah, you do very well lay it out each chapter going through each of the dimensions and understanding how we can work with it and even in the early right at the very beginning i think you, you mentioned your son did the uh, diagrams but even ha- seeing how when especially like if you're you're an energy worker or a healer I work with reiki yes i am a reiki practitioner i'm glad you 
added that in. But when they lay down and how they access it, I know lots of times I could just feel the energies and it's like I never really broke yeah. it down to look at the diagrams. But right away I said, oh, yeah, I get it now. I see. I, yeah, yeah. Right. And so it is an easy way. I do believe part of what Reiki has taught me and others is how to really be in that energy, not just read about it, but to embody mm -hmm. that. And I think that's part of it. Right? I actually, we open I up. actually agree. Yeah. And then the two main diagrams that I think are so powerful. One of them shows the way the nine dimensions is structured from the center of the earth to the galactic center. And that's, of course, a, a pretty hard concept to grasp until you start to play with it. But as you mentioned, the other diagram that is the most powerful one, as far as I'm concerned, is the person on the table. The, and the diagram of person on the table shows each one of us how those frequencies and energies actually um, reach, reach us in our bodies and in our consciousness. So a lot of healers um, are adapting that model. And by the way, when that one came in, now remember this book originally comes from a channel book called The Pleiadian Agenda that came out in 1995. So this book is a scientific and energetic analysis of the Pleiadian Agenda. So Pleiadian Agenda was 1995, and then the first edition of this book was 2004. And so when that one diagram came in, the, Ple the Pleiadians are totally outrageous in terms of which kind of ET. Everybody's dealing with some form of an ET, by the way. But the Pleiadians are just so pushy. And so they said, okay, Barbara, now go down to the tattoo parlor and have that um, tattooed on your hand. And I said, no, no, no. What you have to do with the Pleiadians is say, I'm willing to do this or that, but not that. No tattoo. Interesting. Very <laughs> interesting. I'm not, not sure if this was style. a diagram. Yeah, that's from the or the center of the, you maybe hold it up for a second. At the bottom of the first dimension down there is the iron core crystal in the center of the earth. And then the energy starts rising and becoming more activated as you go up this uh, system, which is called the vertical axis. And then the very top of the uh, diagram shows that the um, deep, the connection at the, on the high side is the galactic center. Okay, so that's what that one is. And that's more complicated. The person on the table is easy. If you want to dig them yeah, up. This one them. kind of reminded me of like our DNA structure too. Like yeah, it doesn't show so. both of the helixes, but I did feel like, yeah. okay, there's something in there that related right away to an intelligence in me. Yeah. That's a good point. And um, yeah. obviously, obviously the Pleiadians intended this. These two, by the way, were transmitted to me. This, this happens for me. Um, when something's ready to come in, if I take a piece of paper and a pencil, I can see the lines coming in and the transmission I can draw on. So these two were transmitted from the Pleiadians. Yeah, so here's the one on the table, just so our listeners yeah. can. So that one yeah. shows the person, the person lying in the table there is in the third dimension, which is linear space and time. So like right now, you and I are doing do a zoom in linear space and time. Then below the person's body is the telluric realm, which is the realm of the magma and all the heat in the earth and all the microbials and all the metallics. And it's a very, very powerful zone. Then the first dimension um, down at the bottom of the triangle is the iron core crystal in the very center of our planet. So what happens with this dynamic is like when you're working with therapists and a therapist is starting to activate you and raise energy, what they do is they work with you emotionally because the way we become less dense while we go 3D is to activate ourselves emotionally. And that is shown by that, by that canopy above the person's body with the fifth dimension, seventh, sixth dimension, seventh dimension, eighth dimension, ninth dimension coming into it. So the importance of this diagram is that when we're in the third dimension, if we're going to get in touch with the fifth and through ninth dimension, and those are the higher dimensions that we can access, and we all can access these dimensions. If we're going to get in touch with this, we've got to process our emotions. And we process our emotions by working with our physical body as well as working with our emotional dynamics. So the therapist would be up at the head of that person at that table and helping them to start to, na let's say navigate. Yeah, the, yeah, that's great. And by the way, the illustrator, this is my son, Chris, and he drew himself there. So there's Chris. <laughs> and Chris is activating somebody on the table. 
And then Jerry is a, my husband is a cranial sacral therapist. And so he could be standing at the end of that table and he does it all the time. And um, we have had a powerful combination going here with Jerry and me because he's body and I'm mind. And between the two of us, we can really activate those levels. And then interesting to me, I could only guide Chris so much in how to do some of these diagrams. So just all I could do is give him as much information as I had. He went beyond things I told him. And now 20 years later, I'm studying his diagrams and learning things from him. And and I emphasize this, Terry, because this is a, by the way, this teaching, I have found evidence for this particular teaching now. And this is what the new introduction is about, is what's going on now, you know. And at this point, we have evidence of this, this particular system being used for tens and hundreds of thousands of years. I've gathered just some amazing evidence for this. This is the central system that seems to work on this planet. Mm. And, and it doesn't disagree with Kabbalah or any of the other. Um, the interesting thing about these, this perennial wisdom, they all are in agreement. They just take a different slant on and work with the energy. Mm, I love that. So I just have an aha moment, too, because I I was down in um, Tioway Chicana last summer working with Toltec Energy, Sacred Sites, and we were opening up, and my teacher, a Toltec teacher, Rita, she had to start with the meditation to call in. And right up in this corner of me, like, my star people showed up. Like, I literally saw, like, I don't know, like, planets or sat, I don't know what it was, but I knew. And just to where I was in there, it was like, okay, this is, like, normal. I didn't think anything of it. But then when we finished and we were walking back up, I'm like, my star people just showed up like, okay. Right. But then later we were at the, the pyramid of the sun and I started seeing light codes and my hands just started moving. And so when I was looking at this diagram, it's like, yeah, like this is how I work. This is what I do. This is how I finish. And I didn't even really know why, but I knew this is what I did. And I just allowed it. So yeah, I can see some kind of activation going on, but the ability for each of us to be able to do this is just quite fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, and then different people are adept at different dimensions. So people, when they study this material, they'll start finding that they really like maybe the fifth dimension, the, the open heart, or maybe they like the sixth dimension, sacred geometry, or maybe they really like the seventh dimension, which is sound. And then you right away get the major esoteric teaching here, which is sound creates geometry. And we can see that with cymatics machines, and we can see that with all the seashells and sunflowers and all the incredible things that exist in our dimension. And then once the geometry is created, then we manifest in the third dimension. And so, the, you know, the way this is working back, it goes up and down, doesn't it? Like, like the ninth dimension is the galactic center, which sends out the indigenous time codes, especially the Mayan calendar. And then the Mayan calendar activates things according to cycles of time, like, like 2011, 2012, in the divine mind. So time from the ninth dimension goes into light in the eighth dimension, and then it's the light, the divine light, which you can think of as God or whatever you want to think of. But that divine light then activates the sound in the universe. And so this is in complete agreement with all of the ancient esoteric systems. You know, and when it came in through me, I didn't know it was. So I started studying all that stuff at that point. Yeah, I started studying too. And I think my first awakening came due to a loss. I lost a baby halfway through and I started going in with myself and feeling the little baby being didn't know, really know what it was. And it actually timed out to when the harmonic convergence started happening, but it was years later that I started studying spirituality years mm -hmm. later. And then I had a spiritual teacher lived off the grid and he started turning me on to so many things, the galactic federation and all that. And I've been studying ever since. And now this is my work. This is my purpose to do this work. 
So I do feel that there are situations like that, but I did want to go back to something because for me, I have a huge emotional body and it has taken me years to understand that that is actually a gift. I mean, growing up, my mother's like, stop being so sensitive, you know, quick, you're crying. And I see this with a lot of my clients too, that come in with those big emotional bodies and how much we're talking about empath energy and the emotions we carry. But I think it's so amazing that you have noticed this and to bring it out, like this is where we can learn. This is what we do need to process to understand. Well, we can't get to those higher dimensions without processing the uh, emotion, emotional body and the trauma that we're carrying. And this is a very, very big deal at this current moment in time because um, we went through this planet and our species. We went through a series of cataclysms around 12,000 years ago. And a lot of people know of that as the fall of Atlantis. And what happened 12,000 years ago is we became a multi-traumatized species. Hmm. And at this point, we're waking up. And by the way, Terry, this also is in complete accord with the, the issue of the yugas in the Indian cycle, like we've been in the Kali Yuga for a couple of thousand years. And we're coming out of the Kali Yuga, March 2025. So we are really in a fast movement awakening at this point. And what's happening to us right now is that um, the um, astrological transits, major astrological transits, are starting to impulse people to go in this direction or that direction. And the astrology in our solar system is opening the cycle for us. But boy... When we go out of the Kali Yuga, there's going to be such a profound change. It's just, it's going to be like harmonic uh, convergence on steroids because something really happened August 1987. I was back, I was down in Mexico leading ceremonies with a couple hundred thousand people. A lot of people have no idea what a big deal harmonic convergence was, you know, mm. and so. This change in March of 2025 at the end of the month is going to be even bigger than that. Wow. Yeah, we know. need it. <laughs> we and need so some let's breakthrough. Put, let's put a balancing um, negative statement with that right away. What we're ha experiencing right now is an energetic upgrade. And it is really, really tough for everybody. And you can see it in world politics and you can see it in all the wars on the planet. Because as we process these emotional blockages that come from the past, and we start to move into the present moment, because we can't stay in the past forever. If we stay in the past forever, this planet is toast. So as we upgrade ourselves energetically, which by the way is being intensely pressured right now by intense solar flares. The solar flares are helping us with the upgrade but you've got to rest a lot. You've got to get out in nature. You've got to take care of yourself. You've got to really pay attention to the people who love you and need you. That's probably the most important thing any of us mm. can do. Because this is really hard. Mm. I'm certainly yeah. trying to be really hard. Yeah, yeah, I'm noticing a lot of shifts myself. And one of it has been through the ability for me to be in my heart more. Mm -hmm. And for me to receive the love of my own community instead of push it away or think I'm different, because I, I did all my education in New York, and then I came back here to Birmingham, Alabama, and helped my parents, which I've talked about many times. And I kept feeling like I was like pushed away, or I was pushing myself away, or whatever it was. But that has been the greatest thing for me to be able to receive. And it happened actually. I came back from Sa uh, Santa Fe this summer. Like I had all this energy come back into me. I was work. I was out there for the Native American dances and looking around and. Then I was with a woman that died and I was very close to her. And all of a sudden I just felt my heart just open mm -hmm. for a community around here that was full of love. And I think that's very valuable to look at, but I do feel there's a lot of shifts in energy and I do feel there's a lot of struggle. And in the 3d world, we get caught in the mind so much. And I think that's where a lot of people are hanging. Right. And so I know that as I continue just to have patience, <laughs> well, and you just know you know what I'd say about, I'd like to make a comment about this, you know, this issue being in 3D. 3D is where we're supposed to be. What's going okay. on right now is the fourth dimension has gotten so much control over the third dimension, mainly through the um, organized religions on the planet, mostly the religions coming from Abraham. 
because the Eastern religions are a little bit different. They're not so heavy sticking you in 4D like Buddhism say. But boy, with the Western uh, religions from Abraham, Islam, and Christianity, and Judaism, what's happened is we've been pulled out of, of, out of 3D. And the way to stay in 3D, of course, is to be conscious of the directions and to be conscious of many energy techniques, which, of course, are covered in this book. So there's kind of two things going on. We've been pulled out of our place and with this constant emotional of uh, dark and light, good and evil, fourth dimensional realm. And at the same time, um, just lost my train of thought. Oh, speaking of your community, I find what you say really interesting because I didn't create a community in this lifetime. I, I, I was the co-publisher of Baron Company for 20 years. So that was a community, but I didn't create a living community the way you have and a lot of the teachers I work with have. And so I haven't had that experience of being pulled away from, uh, you know, from my students because I was running too fast in a sense. But I really relate to what you say, because if I had formed a community, probably the same thing would have happened for me too. And what it is, is we're displaced by time because of the cataclysms and yes. the post-traumatic stress syndrome. So you have obviously achieved, and see, this is why I know we're getting someplace. You have obviously achieved getting back um, into the fifth dimension. See, we're, we're supposed to be in the fifth dimension ultimately while we live in 3D, which means we're supposed to be living in the third dimension in linear space and time and doing our work and all that while we're totally, ha while we have an open heart. But as you can see, there's a disarrangement that developed, you know, 12, 13,000 years ago that we're working out right now. And so I love the story of how you just came back to your community and you were in linear space and time, you know, and you were in the heart because you were in linear space and time. So it was very fascinating to see the distinction between third and fourth. I did not understand that. And I was mm -hmm. kind of smashing them. And there's a part of me that has skipped. Like I can understand fifth and third, but I think I must have just pushed those two together. So I definitely need to go read the chapter on that and understand it better. So thank you for that distinction. I think that's important. Yeah. yeah and the fourth dimension is the hardest dimension for all of us. Okay. So you're not- <laughs> No in wonder. In fact, one of the images I use for, for that issue is the third, fourth, and fifth dimension was Oreo cookies. And like we're would... sandwiched in between. You know, because of the power of the fourth dimension, we're kind of sandwiched in between um, everything. And, um, you know, it's just, it is definitely the hardest dimension. And so that's the reason that the situation in the Middle East is so dire right now. Because mm. the conflict in the Middle East between Christianity, Islam, and Judaism is intensifying as each member of whatever those relig which religion you're in each member of the religion starts to see the fourth dimensional aspects of their own religion. So it's not like the Jews are bad or the Christians are, or are whatever, or Islam is the big enemy. It's, it doesn't have anything to do with that. It has to do with where are you um, not seeing the bad aspects of your own religion as, as well as the good ones. And you can see how when enough people, and there, every day there's more people who are doing this, boy, is that going to change, create a change in the religions. And each religion is going to have to upgrade. Since we have to upgrade, they've got to upgrade too. Or we're not going there. I so agree with you. Yeah, I fought religion, that. you know, since I left Birmingham in the 70s, I have fought religion and pushed it away and was just speaking about this yesterday with a group of like even like abandoning my religion in favor of spirituality. I'm an interfaith minister of spiritual counseling. I was ordained in New York because I didn't understand religion and really kind of coming back to help integrate that part of me that I kind of pushed aside. And yeah, did I go to a rally not too long ago about the Jewish people and the Palestinians to see their side? I did. I needed I needed to see that. And that's exactly what you're speaking to. We, just yeah. need to see, we need to see both sides of all of it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I yeah. agree. Because these, it, yeah, I agree. It's tearing apart so many people. Yeah, and, it and really the is. reason that happened historically, which is really what the fourth dimension is all about, is the age of Aries is before the age of Pisces. Mm. The age of Aries was like, like 0 AD to like 2200 BC. So 2000 years before 
the arrival of Christ on the planet. And then I say that because that that's the shift during the age of Pisces and the, uh, the founding of Christianity. And so what happened at that point was a very big problem. The age of Aries was about the development of organized warfare. And of course, this is this is basically the Jewish history because the Christian history starts in zero AD and then the Islamic history starts in 700 AD. But all three religions are following this timeline, development of war during the age of Aries, and then unfortunately, primarily Christianity turned the wars on the planet into wars for God. And then once Christianity pushed that button, then of course there was major resistance within Judaism, and then eventually, Reformers came along in 700 AD through Islam, Muhammad, etc., to try to clean that up. But it was just such a mess that they couldn't clean it up. So here we are cleaning it up now. because And it's a terrible mess. And what every person thinks and believes is so important at this point. Yeah. And the ability to know one's truth is really important because lots of times we learn stuff from passed down and it's not even our beliefs. I see it right now. I see it in my own family. I see where I am and I see it in siblings and I see it in nieces and nephews. And yeah, it's very fascinating. And at some point we just have to be in and know ourselves to be true, know who we are. And I think that's what we all need to do right now, especially now. You did mention something about um, we all carry ETs or had encounters or something. And I know I, I mentioned this before we started, but I did want to talk about that a little bit because I know my listeners have heard me talk about, you know, my my experiences with the Lumarians. Where does this fit into the, the Palladians and the Galactic Federation and all that you're talking about? Where does that fit in? Is it a that's a very interesting, or? That's a very interesting piece because, first of all, we have these great ages. They're around 2000 years long. But then each one of those great ages, 12 of those great ages, is, is a 26,000 year cycle. So that's the precession cycle. And this is explained in the book, and it's not, it's not easy to talk about it. But what we're actually talking about is 26,000 year cycles. And what happened um, with Lemuria is Lemuria goes way back before Atlantis. It's much older. And it goes back to probably, um, I haven't really written these numbers down, but probably 12,000 BC to like 36,000 BC or something like that. And so during the Lemurian age, that ancient, it's really, it's really the oldest age that most people in America can get in touch with. There's a lot more before that, but most people feel something about the Lemurian age. And some, in your case, you feel a lot because it sounds like your spirituality is being sourced from there. And that's, boy, the more of you that come forward right now, the better, because the Atlantean age was much more imperialistic and, and empire oriented. We can see that from the records that we have uh, from Atlantis. But the Lemurian age was was kind of very, very spiritual. So spiritual. In fact, I wrote an introduction for a Lemurian book just on this topic. But they were so spiritual that they almost weren't really grounded that well and really weren't, you know, connected to the physical that well, but their healing powers and especially their contact with extraterrestrials and other dimensions were very profound. So to put it simply, we've been, since that time of Lemuria, that connection with extraterrestrials has been breaking down, although it was still very strong during Atlantis and then during our age, since since 10,000 BC, something like that. Um, it's been breaking down and breaking down. And now all of a sudden, it's all coming back together. Hmm. Fascinating. Uh, each one of these great ages has great wisdom to offer. Hmm. And the most important thing for anybody who's listening to numbers at all, we're only half through this age. Hmm. And I don't really know what this age is going to be called eventually. Um, hmm. Maybe it'll be called the Pleiadian Age. So the reason I say that is the Lemurians were definitely a pack of Pleiadians. Like even huh. though I don't, yeah, even though I don't have a lot of contact with Lemuria, I've, I've got some past lives and all that. More with Atlantis, um, boy, those Lemurians were a pack of Pleiadians. So it could be that this will eventually be known as the Pleiadian Age. But the important thing is this age is half over. March 2025, 
And then the second half of this age begins, which is the ascending age part of this cycle. You know, and so we're we're in for twelve thousand years of gradual ascension into higher consciousness after degenerating for twelve thirteen thousand years. No That's wonder awesome. I can feel myself what, going yes, yes. Yeah, but no wonder none of us know what to do. You know, yeah. yeah. Oh. But I can see it in my work. I can see more people interested, but yet not quite ready to commit yet. But interested, and then not you know. So it's a little push and pull back and forth. But I just keep holding light. I just just keep telling some of my students too that get a little discouraged here, especially in Birmingham. Like we just have to hold the light. I was just you know chatting with somebody earlier, like. Forget Birmingham. It's like, no, like I do believe besides helping my parents, I did come here for a purpose. And part of it mm -hmm. was to help wake up this area. This is where I come from. This is my blood. This is my grounding place. Right. And so that is very important for me. You know, now I also mentioned that I had that a couple of times. The Akutarians, I know you correct me on how to say it. Mm -hmm. Say Arcturians. it again for me. Arcturians. Arcturians, yeah. Ar 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 Arcturians, Ar yes. From the Ar Arcturus um, star complex. And the weird thing about the Arcturus star, star complex um, is that it's basically at a right angle. It's, this, this can only be shown visually, but to, to basically the, the whole uh, uh, like a plane of the ecliptic and the zodiac. And so it's almost like it's not part of all the other star systems in an oddball sort of way. So the only thing that I could say about it is I, my, my daughter is an Arcturian, Jose Arguez, the author, author, author of Mayan Factor, was an Arct Arcturian. He's not with us anymore. And they tend to be very scientific and very logical. Hmm. And so you may understand um, scientific ideas quite a bit more easily than most people. I, I would agree with that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I remember yeah, as a kid, too, like even physics and, you know, even understanding that. And even though like when I got kept going further and further, it got a little too much. But I, I do agree with that. But I feel like I guess part of the point of what we do want to bring this all forward is that we can have these encounters and it's important to understand them and to really trust them and to continually go in deeper, I would imagine, because that's kind of what I do at night. You know, it's like, OK, before I go to bed and I feel like that dream time for me and early morning waking up, you know, it's like I wake up, I do my alarm early and I, I believe your husband mentioned that in the book, like set your alarm earlier. And I talk about that all the time and just really go into some of this and really allow yourself to really open up. And I think that's partly what you're saying with your book as well, the point of what you're doing, which is my question for you. Like, what is the mission you have with all of this work for so long? What is the mission I have? Oh, to just keep opening it up. And where you can really see my mission the most easily is in the introduction. Okay. So imagine taking a book I didn't have to change hardly anything in this book. That's how well written it was 20 years ago. I had to update it, of course, because time rolled along. So what was I going to say? What more is I going to say in the introduction? So what I did <clears throat> was I looked at two things that are going on in the planet that prove that this material is correct scientifically. One of them is called the Blue Brain Project, which demonstrates that our minds function according to a, a seven to 11, excuse me, nine to 11 dimensional model. And what about those, that 10 and 11 issue? The only thing you need to understand is the Pleiadians have been saying that there are 11 dimensions and 12 and even more. But when the material first came in, they said we could only understand uh, nine of those dimensions. So that's why this is called alchemy of nine dimensions. And now what's happening out there in the field is other people are accessing 10, 11, and 12. For instance, a guy named Joshua Reichman, a Canadian um, teacher who has written a book called The Realized Light of 12 Dimensions. And so right away, Joshua and I became colleagues because he's stretching beyond where I was. And I love that. I mean, that's the best thing about the way the intellectual field um, functions. So I'm just trying to think, what was I trying to say? Um, oh, well, so your mission then, and your point yeah. in bringing this out, sure. Yeah, so I covered the blue brain material so that people could understand that your brain operates according to frequencies that are described in my book. 
And once and I'm, that's a new one for me. Okay, this this only comes through since 2015. I'm finding the way I work with my brain and the frequencies in my brain is changing in some way, but I really can't describe it. And then the other thing I covered was Transylvanian sunrise, which is a body of material that has come to us from Romania. And it's so important. What has happened is the Romanians have uh, discovered and activated an ancient uh, uh, technology and archaeological site that is 50,000 years old. Now, this goes right back, Terry, this goes right back to Lemuria, and this goes right back to my own contact as a Pleiadian, because I'm a very, very Pleiadian being. And in from the point of view of the Pleiades, um, the important cycle on this planet has been going on for 100,000 years. So this 50,000 year point that the Romanians are working with is the high point of the Lemurian culture. So we didn't look at, and, it, and this material is so advanced and so complicated. It's, it, it's available to anybody who wants to buy it um, in seven books that were published by Peter Moon who's a very, very fine esoteric publisher, and a man in R Romania named Radu Cinema. But to make it easy on people, just get the first one, Transylvanian Sunrise. And then you can decide whether you want to go on from there, because you can get a grasp of what's been discovered there, and then you can decide if you want to explore it more. But in my case, you're darn right I explored it more, because a time machine is down there in that archeological site that is 50,000 years old that the Romanians managed to activate. And that time machine shows people in Romania 10, 12,000 years ago doing activation ceremonies exactly like the ones Jerry and I did for 20 years. Wow. I think that can put the top of my crown chakra up like, <laughs> Wow! Yeah, the Romanians, yeah. Even, the Romanians even tried to persuade me to come and perform one in Romania, but when that opportunity came to, back in 2010, I couldn't figure out what they what they were saying and still are saying is so advanced that I couldn't figure it out. But in five pages in my introduction, I managed to summarize it, and it's, it's the hardest piece of writing I've ever ever done. It's taken me two times to go through it. I'll be honest. Yeah, I, I did. Yeah. yeah. I have to slow down myself <laughs> enough to, you know, yeah. But well, when I that is. That, yeah. Well, when I encountered that the first time back in 2010, I just went, these people are crazy. <laughs> you know, I did. And I stayed in that state of mind for like 12 or 13 years until one day I woke up. My students, by the way, this is the younger generation. Everybody kept saying, Barbara, will you please study that material? So I did in 2023. And I understand it well enough to summarize it. I love that. Yeah. 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 Well, I know that I will be dissecting your book little by little slowly. And I think that is one of the things you say in the very beginning. Take it slowly. Don't try to go through too fast. And I appreciated that because there is a lot. And sometimes people can just then put it down. But I think that we have to break it apart a little bit. And you did mention in the back there when when your husband's giving us meditations and all, there is an audio place. You can get those too. I do find that I receive the audio much easier so thank you for that as well. And I don't know if this has anything to do with anything, what you're saying with Romania. Are you familiar with Reiki Rays by any chance? They are a group that come from Romania and they started collecting and bringing a lot of Reiki practitioners together. And every year they've been doing the Reiki Ray Summit and it's about to open up next week. And there's so mm -hmm. much information. In fact, going back and discovering the history of Dr. Yasui and who he really was and how his Christianity kept him apart and how they bridge that. That is just to me so fascinating. So fascinating mm -hmm. what they've discovered with that as well. But maybe it's no surprise that all this energy is coming out through them as well. well and they are coming. Can you send, you know, send, send me that email that one to me? Because I will. Be well, yes, I will definitely oh, for sure. Okay. I will that. And then there was, there was another point I want to make and I can't think of what it was, but it was that. And uh, I don't know. It's quite fascinating, Barbara. It really is. And it's so amazing to have this work come out and to have it in print and just that you can even now draw on 
the way in which the history for what you've brought forward, the original 10 years ago is a history. And now you've updated it to give us even more information. And I just wanted to speak to a little bit about how I am and to my listeners that may feel like I do, like maybe we don't intellectually study it, but working in the energy realm, we recognize what we're feeling and we recognize how we can help through the energy work that we're doing. And I think that's important that we may not have to always understand it, but to trust what we're feeling and to trust those messages that are coming to us and not to give up and not to lose hope. And I think that's a really important thing for all of us to hear because I don't always understand what I'm doing, but I feel like I'm just like, I know this to be true, but I can't explain it, right? It's like cognizance, right? That kind of thing. But yeah, how fascinating and just feel so privileged to be able to have this conversation. I feel like we all got a lesson. (laughs) So thank you for that, for sure. Yeah. So I know we could go on and on and on. Your book is laid out really well. I highly recommend it. Like I said, I know I will be spending lots of time with it. But where can we find your work? Are you teaching anymore? I know you've got so many books out. I may teach more, but, you know, I'm 81 and it's, you know, it's it's very hard to do that. And luckily I can do it this way. So, I, you know, I may find maybe I'll create some fancy thing with Zoom with Jerry. I don't know. Right now we're just trying to get this to as many people as possible. And it's at Amazon. It's at the bookstores. It's at Inner Traditions. All very easy to get. And then the last thing I'd like to say is um, one of the most important uh, composers of the 20th and 21st century is Michael Stearns. And Michael Stearns composed music that expressed the nine dimensions. And how that came about is a long story and it's an incredible serendipity. But the facts are a composer who's as great as Beethoven wrote nine dimensional music and composed it. And that's also for free on the inner tradition on page 238, you can access it, you can listen to the nine-dimensional music. Um, a lot of people, are therapists are starting to use it. It's incredible to put some, somebody on the table and play Michael Stearns' music, which is what Jerry does sometimes in his sessions. Yeah, well, I, I agree. Sound to me is very important. And I can see even now that I've been starting to switch some of the meditation music underneath of those frequencies, I can hear it. And it's like, yeah, mm-hmm. this is definitely a shift. And I think sound has become very important. And I've seen so many people. When I came down to Birmingham, nobody was really doing the sound bowls. And now everybody's doing the sound bowls. And I think it's so important that we access this because it does. It opens us up, like you said, to other dimensions and other understandings, for sure. Light, too. But I do a lot in color in and light. But don't use that music in your car. <laughs> <laughs> this is really full activation music. This is- you wouldn't listen to the Ninth Symphony in your car full blast, you know? <laughs> no, I hear you for sure. Yeah, but for meditation and for, yeah, just, yeah, I agree 100%. And yeah. I just want to say one more one more thing about you. I think it's very powerful that you're grounded and creating with this work, in your work, um, in you know, a place where your family has been for generations. I, that wasn't possible for me because where I grew up has just been basically destroyed. And so you're very fortunate. I think it's very powerful that you were there and you're doing that. Thank you. Thank you for that. Because I have often thought I was about to leave, but I came back and grounded and I've kind of said, okay, I'll be here for another few years. My children are on the West Coast. So eventually, you know, grandchildren will pull me, I'm sure. Right. But for now, I I do feel more grounded. I had a near-death experience that pulled me out right before COVID hit. And then I just, it took me five years to figure out what had happened. I had no idea what had happened to me. And I also had lost my mother, the second apparent. So it was a lot, but it sent me on a search that took me deeper. Ceremonies, Mm -hmm. plant medicines, Costa Rica, Teotihuacan, like all these other places. So now I feel like back, back into my groundedness. Yeah. 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 Very powerful. So now it's how can I then utilize this in the highest manner is what I do. (laughs) What I want to do for sure. It is definitely a passion and a purpose and something that, yeah, I know has been in my charts for a long time and in my hands and everywhere. So as we go to close, Barbara, I don't want to keep you too much longer, but as we go to close, I do like to come back. And if you would leave our listeners with just a final uplifting thought of how you do feel that working with the alchemy of the nine dimensions can help to empower the spirit. It actually can make you much more sane in 3D, third dimension, which is a really hard thing to accomplish. This is very, this is practical stuff, even though it sounds like ultra woo woo. It's very, very practical, practical. Thank you. It is practical and it can help you to manage where we are right now, for sure. And I think give hope and possibility for what is to come, as you said, looking forward to that March 2025, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, thank you, Tara. This has been a joy. I know I'm having a moment right now where I feel like I'm like, my brain is like spinning for a moment. Yeah. yeah. But thank you to your thank spirit. You. Namaste. Thank you. Yes. As Barbara says, working in the nine dimensions can help you make much more sense in this 3D world that we live in, which can be hard to accomplish. What she shows us and teaches us through her work in this book particularly is very practical. To me, it explains what I innately know to do. It gives us the science, the diagrams, and even the meditations and music to help us open up. So do take your time, trust the messages that come in, get to know your authentic self and who you truly are. We are awakening. And if you would like to learn a little bit more about your soul, your purpose, and the imprints you carry, come join me in my soul work, learning to read your Akashic records. That'll be coming up this winter. I will be adding more about star people and how you can connect with that within your own soul as well. Be sure to get on my email list for all of this upcoming information, including my Art of Embodiment, Ignite Your Inner Master Reiki Retreat in Santa Fe in 2025. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening. I am your host, Tarian Hyman, to your spirit, namaste. Namaste.